Back here at the Moore Jig Bar, the uh, camera wigged out on me uh, uh, when I pointed to uh, what's going to save the day on this part being the, the sun and honing machine. And uh, it's kind of um, interesting how things work out, you know, where I have this part that's uh, two types of uh, metal and it's welded together. And it's a problem. So I started of boring it on the machine and at the same time explaining how the machine works, you know. So now I get to the point to where I'm going to have to use another machine to finish the part. And that's the sun and home because of uh, the uh, problem with the uh, two different types of metal and welding and stuff like that. But that's real life. If you're doing repairs on stuff, you know, I've uh, repaired part, new parts that uh, were manufactured uh, and they welded something to it. And then the bore got crooked and they go, whoa, what do we do? Well, that's where the uh, uh, abrasive uh, processes uh, sometimes shine, you know, it, uh, uh, when you can't, <clears throat> excuse me, cut it without deflection and things like that, giving you a crooked bore, then you got to go to the abrasive processes. Okay, now next up on the board chick bore is I want to punch some bigger holes in some uh, other material and uh, I'll scare that up uh, to do that and just continue on punching holes with this machine. Now one of the things I should demonstrate too is how well the jig bore handles attachments like the tree boring head. You know this uh, machine handles that head really really nicely just because <clears throat> of its stiffness. So if, uh, if it's single point cutting, this tool, the jig bore, uh, really shines. But uh, if you're uh, cutting like with uh, end mills, uh, it generally doesn't like that. It uh, somehow gets a harmonic vibration through the machine because of the really stiff spindle bearings. Um, the spindle bearings in a, in a regular milling machine uh, are, are softer. They don't have as high a preload. And uh, so that little bit of give and uh, somehow uh, that reduces harmonic vibration in, in those spindles. And, you know, if you think about it, that Bridgeport spindle design is absolutely remarkable how well it works, you know, it has a pair of uh, angular contact bearings and then a spherical bearing uh, at the tail end of it. And uh, this machine here has uh, uh, two pairs of angular contact uh, bearings at uh, very, very high preload. In fact, it's, uh, it's a custom preload. Um, the, uh, uh, I'll take a little bit of time here and look over the machine a little bit. Um, it was mentioned, hey, let's get a closer look at that, uh, some of that scraping on the machine. And, uh, let's have a look at that. I, I think it's pretty remarkably nice. And I'll get this over here. And I can just lift that camera off. Okay. Let's have a look at that. I uh, don't know a whole lot about scraping. But I'll tell you, it has been said <laughs> that the people at Moore that do this scraping are the best in the world. And, it, you know, it, would, it seems to me it would be really difficult to do this work, you know? Isn't that beautiful? I hope you can see it if you just uh, get the right light on that. You can see the work of master craftsmen. 
<laughs> I, I, uh, I've only done, you know, just kind of like scraping as necessary, more utility. But I, I can scrape my surface grinder ways, and uh, I've done that. And that's something I do about every five years on my surface grinder, at least when I was using it. I lost six years because I got cancer. It's like six years disappeared. Sort of remember it, you know. They medicate you pretty good. But that's one of the problems, too. It's getting off the medication. So I come in here and do stuff and uh, 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 make things and do my woodworking and stuff like that. Just get your mind off stuff and you can do anything, right? Even kick op opiates. There we go. Isn't that nice? I think I got some pretty good angles on that. Okay. There's still quite a bit of scraping on the table ways and stuff, but they, they're worn, you know, they got some wear. But it's uh, pretty even, and I, I just don't have any problems with this machine. Now, one of the things I can tell you about these is um, the vertical way here, you see the condition that's in? And the quill on this machine are in excellent condition. They're tight. And uh, it's just perfect. And uh, that's more important uh, than a lot of the other, like the table and stuff, because you can shim and do things as you have to. But it's really important that you be able to raise and lower that head. So you can do things like um, gauge, your, uh, gauge your parts. I have to do a little gauge repair here, the little... Uh, Plastics coming loose on it. But that gauge is probably 50, 60 years old, too, you know. <laughs> yeah, so what I do, the system is I sharpen the bars here, bring them over here and get them dull, bring them back and sharpen them. And um, that uh, is kind of the name of the game with this machine. Now I'm going to go to uh, some, uh, probably some straight 4140 larger bores, and um, we'll uh, see if we can hit some target diameters sometime down the uh, down the road. And what I'm going to try to do is. Um, Tie these two machines together, these old Monarch 10 double E lathe and uh, this old jig bore. And um, we'll figure out how to approach them so you can hit a target diameter. And one of the most accurate and precision things that I ever work with is uh, like bearings. And um, like if you look uh, good research, if you want to get in the bearings, is all the literature that Barden has. And uh, you can see uh, they have a video about installing spindle bearings and it shows uh, the, the basic tools that you need. And they show the dial bore gauges and they show a set of gauge blocks. OK to uh, calibrate your bore gauges and your micrometers. And uh, you got to get an accuracy of, uh, which I think is a whopping, plus or minus two tenths of a thousandth. That's huge. But uh, bearings are pretty uh, forgiving. But when you work with precision bearings, you want to uh, pretty much get to what's called line-to-line -line fit. And that's uh, where the bearing is um, very much close to the size of the hole, you know. And uh, with this machine, you can get quite a bit closer, all right? But like on a really good vertical mill, you can reach those accuracies, you know if you're really, really careful. And maybe some of these uh, uh, things that I do here uh, will be helpful, you know, to that end. Uh, you know, getting uh, 
uh, consistent results. <laughs> you know, and uh, one of the really important things is uh, that uh, getting your boring bar straight in the head. And uh, that's something that seemed to uh, have been lost. As long as using, uh, along with uh, using a tool and cutter grinder. So there you have it. Um, I think it was a pretty su successful little deal so far on there, but it's going to end up getting finished on the sun and home. Now this, uh, this piece here is going to end up uh, over here with the bushing on it and some other doodads, and I'll probably do some videos on the Monarch uh, 10 E making those. It's going to fit in the hair. And then a horizontal arbor uh, fits into that, you know, with the bushing. And uh, it's because of this head arrangement and the way they made this machine sort of like more versatile than it needs to be. You can leave the vertical attachment on and still use horizontal arbor. Okay, I got these videos to load. I hope you find them uh, useful. Okay, I'll be back. Bye.